Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the ultimate guide to Britain. Now, I recently realized the vast majority of my audience are not British and potentially don't fully know the true enlightened story of what it is to be British. Now, who better to give you the ultimate guide to Britain than I, the spiffing Brit, the most British person of all. So British, in fact, I will be doing the classically British thing and naturally I will be largely ignoring Wales and Scotland. So. Let's get into this fantastic guide. Of course, make sure you're sat back on your discounted DFS sofa, you have a nice warm cup of Yorkshire tea in hand, a rich tea biscuit in the other, and you're also ready to salute the portrait of the Queen that hangs above your television set. Without further ado, let's jump into this glorious guide. Up until recently, it was actually surprisingly easy to visit Britain, mostly because whether you liked it or not, Britain would inevitably be coming to you or your country's borders. Now, however, you have to actually come to Britain and see it, and in the modern world of 2020, that's actually nearly impossible. Wait, no, I am in fact hearing that thanks to exciting travel decisions, literally anyone can turn up, provided they do a pinky promise on the border and swear they're not currently carrying the plague. Of course, once you do arrive in the UK, make sure to visit all of our prime tourist hotspots spots like Grimsby, Bognor Regis and my personal favourite the burnt out husk of Western Supermare. For a country that invaded the entire world and has had access to all manner of cultures and delicacies, you would imagine we have created the height of culinary cuisine. And of course we have! From our incredible pastry delights of butter-flavoured pies, to the perfect party appetizers of jellied eels. Customarily, all British food must pass a set criteria of important food seasoning. The PISS test. Pepper, Italian herbs, salt and more salt. And of course, if after this process the food isn't rendered satisfactorily inedible, make sure to douse it in either watery gravy or vinegar. But it's not all fine home dining when it comes to British food. No, sometimes we do actually stray outside of our homes and castles to eat in one of two fine world-class dining establishments, pret a manger and Gregonald's. One makes bland, flavourless sandwiches which manage to replicate the constant grey weather in terms of enjoyment and flavour, and the other, Greg's, does all of that at half the cost. The language of Britain is English. But wait, there's more! Because whilst Big Knight from Somerset speaks English and Janet in Aberdeen also speaks English, I can't understand a bloody thing either of them are saying. The British language is a complete mess of local terms that means the entire nation is on a perpetual cusp of civil war. And this is entirely over the way in which local regions refer to a bread roll. I for one stand with the Cobb crew and the fact that the people of Cornwall would dare call it a tea cake despite the fact that a bread roll contains neither tea or cake is reason enough, in my opinion, to simply sever them from the mainland and float them off into the Atlantic Ocean. Sunday is of course an important day of the week for all Brits. Most of the country's population spends the morning praying. Some go to church to pray that the world will become a better place and that God will remind them to buy an AC unit before the summer heatwaves strike again. The others of course spend Sunday in bed praying that their children simply won't break down the door and that they can finally get another five minutes of rest. It's raining. Every child must have an education, but in Britain, education starts early. On a child's fourth birthday, they must duel the oldest wizard in the household. Of course, defeating your family's wizard instantly grants you access to Hogwarts, and failing to best them results in you being exiled from the family and sent to work as a chimney sweep in Swindon, where you'll learn the hard way that it's coal that powers the Industrial Revolution in this country, and not the tears of children. There are many great British monuments that will strike lasting memories in the minds of any person misfortunate enough to find themselves stranded on this island. For a start, we have Pile of Old Rocks near the A303. Now, of course, if you can't travel halfway across the world to see these particular rocks, then you can simply go outside and find a nice local boulder. You'll get pretty much the same feeling of satisfaction. Next up, we have a really tall clock. Once again, if you don't have a clock at home, you're more than welcome to come over and see it when it eventually tells the time again. Some 
sometime in 2025. We also have a really long wall to keep the Scottish people out of England, and as you can see, it's not really doing a good job, as the two countries unified in 1707. Honestly, probably the worst wall ever made. But of course, all of these national wonders pale in comparison to the eighth wonder of the world, right here in Britain. That's right, I'm of course talking about the Bood Wind Tunnel, a location so fantastic that I hold the highest rated Google review of it. It is literally a wind tunnel outside of a Sainsbury's, and it is the greatest tourist attraction that this nation has to offer. Britain has a very interesting culture that revolves around holding absolute indifference to most humans, and of course making sure to be as polite as possible. We help enforce this by having many exciting rules that enforce this sort of correct behaviour. For example, the British culture is the only culture where you can be jailed for not liking and subscribing to a Yorkshire Tea propaganda channel like this one. Of course I joke, because we wouldn't do something so silly, instead we'd impose the death penalty on anyone who fails to like Yorkshire Tea based propaganda. Famously, everyone in Britain lives in a castle, or a manor house. This is however wrong in the case of the Welsh, who live in two castles. Seriously, there are so many castles in Wales. However, of course, due to recent economic downturn, we are advising that young peoples simply do not follow past traditions of buying derelict Scottish castles for £200, and instead rent a cardboard box under a bridge in London for £1,000 a week as well as your left kidney. The national sport of Britain is, of course, excessive drinking, followed by intermittent hooliganism and early-onset liver failure. This is, however, only a recent sporting phenomenon, as traditional British sports are mostly the Olympic 1000m egg and spoon race and the vastly more sophisticated hoop and stick death derby. There are of course three different countries that make up Great Britain and they really help to diversify British culture. For example, the people of Wales wish that England would sink back into the fiery pits of hell. The people of Scotland also hope for the same. The people of England, however, can't work out why no one seems to like them. It would surely have nothing to do with the rest of the country being used as guinea pigs for weapons tests and policy decisions. Whilst there are of course many differences between these nations, they are unified into being British by having one common enemy. Happy to tourists, which we've all agreed must be grunted at and encouraged to leave all positivity back where they came from. Happiness and Britishness are simply two juxtaposed ideologies that cannot agree with each other. It is still raining. Now, we Brits live in a democracy, which means every four years we have to decide which face will be giving us the next few years worth of bad news. Of course, the British democracy is a bit different than most, as our real leader is not a lizard person, but instead a down-to-earth 9,000-year-old immortal god who can evaporate the life force out of any coffee drinkers that stray too close to British territorial waters. Also, once a year she does a lovely Christmas speech and that makes everyone happy. Tea is the ultimate drink for British people. There are thousands of different types of tea brands in Britain, which of course means that there is an ultimate tea out there, which is of course superior to all other types of tea. Now, after years of scientific study, I realized that there are many different types of people and many different types of warm drinks for all of these different people to enjoy. And that deep down, we didn't need a tier list of which tea was slightly better than others. Instead, what we needed was the ultimate definitive tea that dwarfs all other teas and crushes crushes them into the soily mud from whence they came. Behold our beloved ultimate tea overlord, Yorkshire Tea Gold. Yorkshire Tea Gold is the source of all greatness in this world. It gave life to humanity and balance to the force. It is also the source of my own immortality and the bribe money that falls into my account once a month. All hail our brand new leafy overlords. Famously, the British people have teeth. However, unlike most humans, British teeth have evolved to distance themselves from each other. This is largely due to children being injected with 50 cc's of cynicism on their 10th birthday. It is now flooding. 
We Brits are famous for naming our towns and cities fantastic names. In England, we like to make the most pretentious sounding places possible, like Upton Snodsbury or Beer. The Scots, however, like to name places to encourage the English to simply stop visiting, hence why they have such idyllic spots as Dull, Pity Me and Lost. The Welsh, however, decided to name everything by getting pissed and rolling a sheep over a keyboard. It has resulted in such fantastic locations that can be pronounced like the following the following section has been removed in order to protect national stability. Famously, Britain doesn't have a complex history, as it simply appeared into existence when the Earth was created. At no point in Britain's history were we invaded or conquered, ever. We are in fact entirely independent from the entire world, so much so in fact that in 2021 the British exit of the Earth is planned to take place, wherein which the Queen will supercharge the Hadron Collider and we will simply move our entire country to Mars. We Brits love to relax as much as the rest of you weird smelling foreign people. The most comfortable way for a Brit to relax is to go outside and queue for the latest release of the Blu-ray copy of Love Actually. Nothing relaxes a Brit more than queuing and re-watching the 2003 Christmas classic starring Hugh Grant. Although if you're going for a particularly rough spot in life, it is advised that you actually instead relax by watching the entire box set of Downton Abbey whilst crying into a half melted tub of vanilla ice cream. Congratulations, because you've reached the end of this video, which means you've achieved one of two things. Either the total sense of fulfillment and euphoria that comes with understanding British people, or you've been left more confused than when you actually started with this perfectly accurate video. If of course you believe any information or aspect of this video to be incorrect, then make sure to PO Box your recommendation to the comment section, where I will be outsourcing all responses to an eight-year-old Welsh child, who will be doing their best to assist you and your British-related questions. Now as always, if you enjoy today's British guide and want to guide to your own country from the omniscient perspective of the spiffing Brit, then subscribe to be notified when that video of pure offensiveness will be released. I personally can't wait to review the Germans. What could possibly go wrong? Anyway, this has been a slightly different video from my channel, so if you have indeed enjoyed this, make sure to give the video a like. And hey, if you want to see more very strange Britishness and most importantly very strange and British ways of playing video games, then I strongly recommend watching some of my other videos. Anyway, as always, a massive thank you to each and every one of you lovely sausages for watching. Go watch this video on screen now. Trust me, it's going to be perfect for you. Anyway, I will see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.